Hello again, I am Blunty, and if I had a piano key necktie, I would look exactly like I had leapt out of a 1989 music video right now, but the reason I'm wearing these goofy looking shades is because I'm reviewing a 3D TV today. And these are the goofy goggles that permit the 3D TV effect to actually happen. If you really want to know how it actually works, you can look it up on Wikipedia or something. I'm going to tell you if it's worth buying one today. Not how it works, but why it works, what it feels like when it works is it worth having a 3d tv in your home and i've been to all the launch events from sony and panasonic and samsung and i've checked out the various models and samsung have lent me a 3d tv to have in my home for a couple of weeks so i can finally sit down and soak it in properly in a home environment not just five minutes at a time at a at a tech demonstration at a press event or one i've actually been sitting down watching entire shows playing video games in 3d and all that sort of stuff every single time i've talked about 3d tvs in the comments section there's people who go oh it's just a gimmick and the 3d tv is stupid i don't want 3d tv and just all these naysayers basically saying well 3d is stupid 3d tv is stupid 3d tv is a gimmick i don't want to wear these stupid goggles in my home and blah blah and you know what it's like people just like to bitch about stuff but all that 3d rubbish just put aside for the moment we'll put it we'll put it just over there is the tv set any good yes it is it's a plasma set so it's really good when you're in a dark viewing environment superb when you're watching movies because the blacks are lovely and black and the dynamic range is great and I'm not going to go into LCD versus plasma because there are there are good and bad things about both but this is the plasma one so that's where I'm coming from the, the picture is superb it's bright it's vibrant it's it's lovely and saturated and all the little bells and whistles like the internet TV oh, it could be better we're still in the early days some other some other manufacturers are doing the the IP TV thing a little bit better than Samsung at the moment but what is there works reasonably well enough I can watch YouTube I can search I can do all that sort of stuff and you can bring up news feeds and little tickers down the bottom which is all lovely but quite frankly I didn't use it really that much at all so it's there if you want to use it if not who cares it's got a standard set of inputs they say you got four HDMI you've got all the ins and outs you could possibly want so it makes it nice and easy to connect up all your gear and still maybe have one or two connections left over if you buy something new. I did not like the remote control because it didn't have sort of stick out rubbery buttons like you get on most remote controls. What you have is a sort of slick, sort of stainless steel-ish kind of surface with buttons that are just kind of there. They're flat and I didn't like that very much at all because when I'm using my remote, I, I don't look down at it. I, I know where the buttons are. I, I learn where the buttons are. So I can just pick it up and when I'm still watching the screen, I can find the volume, I can find the channel, I can find the power, I can find the, the source input and everything and I don't have to sit and go, oh, where's it? Oh, there it is and find it. That's why I didn't, yeah, the remote's not much good. The remote works fine and everything. It's just, I don't like the finish and I don't like the way the buttons are. I didn't like that at all. I much preferred the old style remotes that Samsung. I don't know why they changed it. The remotes were great before. They had nice distinct buttons and a, a good layout and everything. And mm, I don't like change. Another thing I really liked about it is it's got a couple of USB ports on there. You can use one for the Wi-Fi dongle if you want to hook it up to the Wi-Fi in your house and whatnot. That comes separately. But the, the second one, there, you can actually hook a hard drive up to that where you can play media that you've, you've downloaded or ripped or done whatever you do to get media onto your thing or record it on your own cameras. You know, don't break copyright laws. <laughs> but you can play media from directly from a hard drive onto the set. But the other thing you can do when you hook up a hard drive to this TV set is it has it's 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 a DVR ready, a digital video recorder ready. So it's got all the bits and con and, and software in there that it needs to record TV shows and pause live broadcasts and things like that. It's got a built-in. All it needs is a hard drive hooked up. So you hook a hard drive up. You can, you know, if if you have to go make your dinner and you don't want to miss your favorite episode of. I don't know, Top Gear or whatever you're watching, you can actually pause live TV or we can record it. But you know what, look, blah, 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 it's a nice TV, it's a good TV, the features are great, it works, it does what a TV's supposed to do, it's got some nice bells and whistles, but that's not what you want to know. You want to know, is 3D TV a worthwhile thing to even bother with? Now, because there are no 3D TV stations actually broadcasting in Sydney at the moment, there was a trial station they had going a while back, but that's apparently stopped now. So when I went to try and watch some live 3D TV over the air broadcast stuff, there was nothing I could watch, which made it a bit hard, really. So Samsung actually lent me a, Blu a 3D Blu-ray player and a 3D Blu-ray, which happens to be Monsters vs. Aliens, a movie I quite liked, I quite enjoyed. So that's that was my that was my sample passive entertainment for 3D TV. Unfortunately, they didn't actually send me the Monsters vs. Aliens movie. What they did send me was the shop demo disc, which means there were about five scenes 
from the movie that just repeat it's just those same five scenes over and over and over and they looked spectacular high def 3d content you know designed from the ground up to be 3d it wasn't like that clash of the titans movie or whatnot where it was filmed in 2d and then transferred into 3d and it looked horrible in the cinemas and all that sort of stuff which brings me to my next point if you are watching regular broadcast tv just normal 2d hd tv or even standard f tv there's a feature on this tv that can turn 2d content into 3d content and it sounds like it would be just a complete ridiculous gimmick but actually works pretty well i watched like a half a season of mythbusters in 3d and mythbusters is a 2d program i watched it in 3d using this little neat little software trick that the tv has and it works reasonably well i mean it does it you know you don't get the feeling like a real 3d you don't get the feeling like you're looking through a window into a world this kind of separates the background out from the characters and everything gets a little bit of depth and it, it is a bit of a gimmick kind of but with the right content it can look very convincing so let's talk about the goggles shall we these are reasonably comfortable they are of course about three times heavier than your average pair of sunglasses because there's electronics in there and there's a battery in there and there's an infrared receiver to get a signal from the tv so it knows the timing of when to blank out the eyes and all that sort of stuff and but they are comfortable i wore them for you know like three or four hours on end when i was going through the mistbusters thing and you know they did you know they didn't make my nose ache they didn't press down on my ears or that i didn't get any eye strain i didn't feel nauseous like some people can and that is a problem some people do react badly to 3d or oh, false 3d um but they're fine for wearing them for long periods they do in fact fit over glasses every time i've gone to a a, a demo of one of these things a pr sort of event where they're going here are our 3 dvs check them out and i hadn't had my actual glasses with me to I usually wear glasses when I'm working at the computer or anything. It's a very minor thing, but these do fit over glasses perfectly fine, as you can see. One thing I do not like is they take a little button cell battery, which means after about 100 hours-ish of use, they say in the manual, you're going to have to replace the battery. And they're not a battery you can find in the supermarket. It's a little button cell battery. You're going to have to go to somewhere a little more specialized, somewhere that sells electronics and cameras and bits and pieces like that. You're not going to walk down to your supermarket and pick up a pack of double A's to whack in this thing because it doesn't work like that. And the battery is a about three dollars australian you can get them cheaper but a decent one would cost you about three dollars so three dollars every hundred hours of viewing or so they really need to get rechargeable batteries and anything seriously really really need to get rechargeable batteries it's ridiculous i mean seriously people would freak the hell out at tv companies if you had to change the batteries in your remote control every week or so it'd be a ridiculous situation to ask people to do same thing with these they need rechargeable batteries in them that's the other thing if you've got a whole bunch of people in your house a big family or a share house or everything and you have big movie nights and you all want to sit down and watch so you're going to have to buy each pair of these separately and they're more than a hundred bucks australian at the moment which is a bit ridiculous because you can wind up spending an extra $300 for the average four-person household to all sit down and watch a 3D movie at the same time. Another problem, there is a significant brightness drop because as you can see, these are sort of tinted like sunglasses. But you can also see from the shot here, that there's a color cast to them as well. Everything gets a little bit warmer, if I'm going to be kind, but what it actually does is turn things a little bit, a little bit yellow, a little bit orange. That's not really the ideal experience for watching television, which are, you know, you watch professionally generated content, it's very carefully, uh, very carefully color corrected to give the, the, the feeling and the mood and everything that the director wants you to have. I mean, if you watch like the Matrix, I was watching that the other night, every, th every shot you see that's like inside the Matrix when they're part of the Matrix, it's all got this green cast on them to show they're inside the computer system. It's supposed to be. Uh, sort of subliminal, but they went a bit too far in my personal opinion, it's very obvious. But anyway, that kind of thing, it gets, it gets thrown off by having 3D TV glasses that introduce a color cast. And with current technology, there's no real easy way around that. And it's it's a bit of a niggle, but it's, a, it's there. It's a problem. It's an issue that needs to be sorted out. But let me tell you, there is one killer application if you're like, if you're going like me, there is one reason you have to own a 3D TV. There is just one thing that will that will sell 3D TVs to people like me, and it is gaming, because gaming in 3D on these sets is amazing. The reason gaming is better than watching passive 3D, and when you're watching passive 3D in tournament, you're like, ooh, that's all 3D, it's all depth and lovely and cool, but it makes a huge difference 
when you're playing video games. And currently the PlayStation 3 is the only one that does proper 3D TV uh, stereoscopic 3D gaming thing. It's it's tough when you talk about gaming in 3D because they're like, oh, this is a 3D game. And what they mean is it's 3D rendered, but it's actually presented in 2D. So when you're talking about 3D gaming that work with these things, you have to go 3D stereoscopic gaming. And it's stereoscopic, stereoscopic gaming. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But anyway, that's where these things pay off. There's only a few games at the moment, but there are more coming because it's really easy to turn games into 3D content because they're already rendered in 3D. All you got to do is render the two different frames and everything, and that's that's relatively simple to do. So there will be a lot more 3D gaming coming soon. I mean, seriously, it makes a huge difference when you're in an interactive environment, when you're driving, when you're flying a ship, when you're moving through an environment. It is a massive difference when you combine 3D TV with the PlayStation Move, which I've only had a brief go on yet, and I've only tried it in 2D, but when you think about combining that sort of 3D motion control where it tracks you in three dimensions, combined with being able to see the damn game in three dimensions and get that depth and everything, it's going to open up a whole new world, a whole new exciting, passionate, thrilling world of new kinds of gaming experiences, because now, you can reach into that damn world, okay? It's it's going to be brilliant. And that, that is the one reason I would tell you guys, yes, buy a 3D capable TV. Buy a 3D TV. But if you're buying a TV anyway, considering the price difference, there's no reason not to buy a 3D capable one, really. I mean, we're in the technological early days, and just like HD TVs got way better over the, uh, you know, in the in the following years after their releases, as the company sort of figured out the technology and figured out how to make it really, really good, the same thing's going to happen with 3D TV. Eventually, we'll get companies releasing large screen glassesless 3D TV, so you don't have to wear goggles. But that won't come for a while because currently it only works. On a very small screen, it only works from a very particular angle, so it's not really good for sitting in a lounge room where you've got a bunch of people watching it from different angles. It doesn't really work that well yet, so don't hold out for the glasses of 3D TV just yet, because these are going to be around for a little while yet, but as the technology evolves and you get hopefully clearer lenses on these things that don't, it don't sort of darken the image a little bit and don't introduce color cast and all that sort of stuff, that's only really going to uh, bother you if you're a really movie nerd nut like me. In gaming, it didn't bother me at all. Like, I didn't even notice. And that's the thing. When you watch these things, you do get... You, your, your brain adjusts to the slightly yellow cast. Your brain adjusts to the, the drop in brightness and everything. But I know it's there because I'm a nerd. So, to cap it all off, the Samsung Series 7 7000 3D TV, the plasma one, is a really really good TV with some lovely bells and whistles. It's a bonus that it's 3D capable, in my opinion. It's a really good TV to have just for regular TV stuff. It's just nice to have that 3D sitting there if and when you do want to use it. And it's brilliant, as I keep saying, keep saying it, it's brilliant for gaming. But it's not the be all and end all. It is a little bit gimmicky just at the moment only because there's not enough content out there there's not enough stuff coming to you in 3d yet once there's a lot more content out there and once regular tv you know they start filming episodes of house in 3d and whatnot and once it becomes more ubiquitous then there's going to be sort of a, a, a sea change i think anyway i've reached the point in my recording which often happens when i don't actually work from a script where i'm just repeating myself and rambling into oblivion so i'm going to sign off here and say catch you next time thanks for watching